stop. Stop what you're doing. Before you click this video and watch it, before you unsubscribe, before you skip ahead, stop. Please, listen to me. I want to preface this video with a little bit of information. It may affect some of my subscribers, my currently 63,000 subscribers. Some of them are going to disappear. They're not going to subscribe anymore. They're going to unsubscribe. Some of you may have seen this video on a share and you learned a little bit and you got a little bit of motivation so you subscribed to my channel. That's fine. I'm going to make this as clear as possible and I'm not going to hold anything back. I'm disgusted. Again, we have an imminent danger out there in the ocean. There is a category four storm hurricane that will be on our doorsteps in a matter of days. But there's people out there that don't understand. There are variables like you don't have money and you're busy working, that's fine. But when you wanna to go to a gas station as a, a, you're a big man, you're a real man, and you're gonna cuss out a 24 year old and all the female workers at a Cumberland because you waited till the last minute before they ran out of gas? Look, they're already fighting, look at them. What gives you that right? I told him off, you didn't see it in video, but what gives you that right to think you're somebody? Listen guys and gals and children and elderly folk, I'm sorry if this video offends you. It's not gonna be that raw, but I'm not going to hold back. I want to get the word across. And if it means me making a video in this nature, then I'll do it because it needs to be brought to your attention. You don't live in a state that's imminent of a hurricane without preparation. Hurricane season starts June 1st every year. Today is August 29th. Why are you panicking? You should have had this stuff months ago. And the last thing is, you don't panic. Get your plan together. The news station's gonna tell you that all the time. The news is gonna tell you to have a plan. The weather station will tell you, have a plan. Execute your plan. Do it. I don't understand what the big problem is. So with that being said, I'm going to show you my next part two to Hurricane Dorian. If you haven't seen my previous video when Hurricane Irma came through, you might get a kick out of that. So go ahead back to my channel and check out the only hurricane survival guide you will ever need to watch. That's on YouTube. And I made some really good points. But now we're dealing with Hurricane Dorian. And I want you to be prepared for the next one. This is me looking out for you, not being some hot shot on YouTube. Don't take it from some guy who's got a YouTube channel. Just listen to a little bit of information and go educate yourself. This will make it a lot easier for you, for me, your neighbor, the guy over here on the beach that's sitting in his lounge chair because he's prepared. This is Hurricane Dorian. How to prepare for a storm, and if you haven't prepared, you're an idiot. The hurricane's coming. Is this how we prepare for a hurricane? What are you doing, Chris? Uh, Where's your gas? You got this on display here? Yeah, I got my cans. Got... Are they full of gas? Yeah. Tell me, is your car full of gas? Both cars full of gas. Full of gas. Full of gas. Full of gas. We got batteries? Yeah, you, you need batteries. You got batteries. We got a can. We got, we got, we a got case water. Of water out here. We got a case down there. We got a case inside. We want. We got. We got plywood shutters. We got garage door shutters. We got plywood behind there. Yep. Plywood's over here. I was there. We got the garage and and rear sliding door shutters. No 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 wait wait no 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 leave it alone leave it alone. What? Leave it alone. Why? It's metal. It'll rust. Yeah, we're just looking at the mobile across the street, <laughs> our local city. Uh, when I passed by on lunch, they had a tanker refilling the gas station. They are currently out. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. Do you mean to tell me we're driving around right now Free spirited with no reason to get gas, and there's people that are panicking out here. Look at that, we got motorhomes getting gas. 
Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> look at this. Look at look at this. If you got a motorcycle, you don't even be getting freaking gas on a motorcycle. <laughs> okay, because you ain't freaking I mean unless that's your only mode of transportation. What oh whoa oh, oh, whoa oh, oh, whoa oh, whoa bumpy Jesus. here, bumpy. Okay, so there's no gas so it's safe to assume that it's safe to assume we're in panic mode here, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, we're in panic mode. So we're in panic mode here. Let's check out another place. So, so Chris, what, what do we got here at Murphy USA in front of, in front of Walmart? So we got people backing into people. We got just cars everywhere. Was there an accident? Uh, not yet. <laughs> I predict there will be accidents. People punching people for gas. I've, I've seen that. You've seen it in my 2017 hurricane video. People were fist fighting, but I didn't get it on camera. Go ahead. But at least uh, on the bright side, we got a fresh tanker being delivered here. So, Is this uh, the last tanker that's coming to Florida? Uh, doubtful. Helpful. You'll probably see a. Uh, What's the cone? What's the cone there? That pump just shut off. <laughs> that pump burned up its, its uh, quadrants <laughs> earlier today, one after another. Yep. People are just panicking. Joe Dog! <laughs> Joe Dog! People getting gas and there's no more bread or water. What do you What do you mean there's no more bread and water? I guess everyone's going crazy for it. Chris? Do you have your bread and water, Chris? I do. We have five days for a hurricane. What do you think, Joe? I think we got plenty of time for more gas and bread and water. <laughs> where'd, you, you, where'd, you, you, where'd you go for bread and water? My mom went to Sam's. Nothing? No. Oh, oh my. Right yeah, you got water? I got water, too. I got water for my shop. Do you have your preparations? Pretty much. You, you're all prepared? Just need gas. Just need gas, right? All right. She's running. Yeah. She's running. Got a problem. Puddle of gas. She's pan look, she's panicking. She doesn't even need gas, but she's panicking. Look, there's a cone. Yeah, so why most people are panicking, as you can see from the line out to US 1. <laughs> most people uh, that are Florida natives, they know uh, hurricane season starts June 1st. <laughs> so we prepare early. Now let's, uh, let's wait till uh, three days before the storm comes. <laughs> And try and get uh, bread and butter and everything else. So, uh, are you yeah. clean, are you cleaning my window? So we got time to clean windows. <laughs> we got everything we need. The plywood's almost gone. Look at that. Dude, look at all that. Look at the ply. Look at the plywood gone. Look at it. Look at it. Now, the, I, I, here, tell me if I'm right or not. The, the only people that should have plywood right now would be buying plywood. People that just moved to Florida. What happened to plywood they bought last year? Well, it's not that. It's people who. I mean, I get it. A lot of people have more money than me. They they live in a house. Can't that's afford got... shutters. Yeah, but people but... like me who cut them off and then just drill straight into the wood frame house. <laughs> you know, people with the concrete houses. You know, more than like. Well, there's there's. I guarantee this plywood's gonna be gone tomorrow. Oh yeah, dude. Look at it. you got what? One, two, three, four, five, six. You got seven stacks gone today. Plywood is gone. Just about. So you have plywood at your house. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you're, oh, you're I'm, prepared. I'm prepared as well. So I do battery backup. That's it. Ham radio. Ham radio. <laughs> water. Yeah, bread. Generator. Gasoline. We're good. Chris, you want, you want to buy more gas cans? I might as well since there's only uh, five left. Well, well, you have gas cans though. Yeah, but uh, you, know, you might as well just get more. For the mower? For our jet skis? Yeah. You know, we might as well go ride jet skis after we get up in the hurricane. <laughs> Everybody else, you know, it's... Oh, weird. man, I feel bad. People are going to hate us. That's, okay. that's what, that is why June 1st... Well, June 1st. Every, every year they do hurricane preparedness uh, expos to uh, raise awareness, much like this video right here. I'm not being a sarcastic ass. I'm trying to raise awareness and people don't understand. They'd rather buy their, their, their toys and their gummy bears instead of buying... Uh, he said aisle 49. I want to see how many generators are here. People would rather buy stuff they don't need. Put the stuff in your hurricane supplies. I don't get it. I'm not loaded, guys. I'm not rich. I every year. That Chris, Chris, Chris are, you, are, are you rich, Chris? No. Uh, Chris ain't rich either, but he's got to get the stuff to protect his family. But every year, it's always madhouse, mass hysteria to get generators and everything. Okay, this guy we said... Do it, we go through it every year. Every year. Hold on, boy. This guy says aisle 49 is a generator. Okay, okay. Do you see a generator here? The generator's gone. <laughs> Make a friend, Chris. Oh. <laughs>
What are you laughing for, boy? They got all kinds of Halloween stuff up here. It's hurricane coming. Why do we have Halloween stuff? Yeah, that's because we got all our supplies. June first, hurricane season. Chris spotted that there's no more double A's here. It's only triple A's. And of course, everything runs on double, double A's. A's. So nobody CDs. wants the triple A's. There's no batteries left. We got five days before a hurricane. Nobody's got batteries. Yeah, all double A's gone. I wonder what Walmart's got. You want to stop there next? Yeah. We're Hell yeah. Chris, you want a hamburger? Yeah, I'll take it. I think it's 69 cent cheeseburgers. Is this 69 cent cheeseburger? Yeah, I've got them today. All right, let me get uh, two of those. Uh, and can, a, can I get a, also get a medium mocha frappe? For who? Okay. Have you prepared for hurricane season? I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, you were, I get it. All right, we're all set. All right. Right, it's gonna be 628 in the first window. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is the latest run. Dude, look at that eye, bro. Of the HWRF forecasting landfall at 922 millibars. Okay, Michael hit the panhandle last year at 919 millibar Cat 5. What are you, a weather? What are you, a meteorologist? I'm becoming an expert. Oh, at we got someone for food here. Thank you. I'm becoming a freaking weather expert. Okay, so what's this? Oh, thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. All, all I know is I see a oh, definitive okay. eye under that I have not seen yet with the storm. Oh, yeah. Why oh, are you yeah. drinking a McDonald's frappe, bro? I'm thirsty. Shouldn't you be preparing? I am prepared, bro. I got all my necessities. Are you telling me you're going to enjoy this McCafe frappe? Oh, hold on. Let me take Mmm. <laughs> I got diapers. I got wipes. I got gas. I got water. Suck it. <laughs> you ain't ready or shit out of luck. All of the, all the goods are about out. Chris, wanna grab some water? Uh, yeah, the 40 packs, yeah, they're gone. What do you mean, they're gone? What do you mean? 40 packs, water gone. What do you all mean the, the water's gone? All the water's gone. What do you mean? You want a soda pop? We got plenty of soda pop. We got soda? I'll drink a warm soda. <laughs> I'll drink a soda. Oh, look at that. We got coolers. We need a cooler for if you ain't got water. Cheaper at damn Home Depot than they are here. Uh, yeah, because I told you not to buy a cooler at Home Depot. Oh, you gotta go to the sporting goods. Look at this. Look at this. No water. No water. Gone. Gone. What? There's, listen, there's, there's five days to a hurricane. Five days. What do you think? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Wait, bro. wait. Do you have water at your house? Oh, I got three cases, four cases. I'm good. You're good. You want to tell us when hurricane season starts? Uh, June 1st. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it, it's it's so easy to just pick up a, a case of water. What, what are you looking at? Up to five days. You want to buy something here? That ain't no Yeti, bro. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's Yeti like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this guy says Yeti like. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, we got when you run out of water you get Gatorade. Look at this. Because this is the next best thing to drink other than water, right? This is where all the rollbacks happen at Walmart. Gatorade. Alright, so for the people that want to have a hurricane party, yes, we, we're being serious here. You've got your preparations, you have a family, I understand. But when you're home from work and you have a hurricane party, Bud Light Orange. So, if, so you, if you guys go back to 2004, if uh, any of you non, uh, uh, what they call them, uh, native Floridians, non-native Floridians, people would know just, people that just moved here that don't know any better would know that we had two hurricanes within two weeks. We we're out of power. For Francis like a, and Jean. We're out out of power for like a month. Well, they put martial law in. We had military police. You couldn't buy beer, alcohol, any of that. So there are beer. It's safe to assume there are beer drinkers. Yeah, because uh, I tell you what. Wait, starting... wait, hold on, hold on. Back up. We got five days before the storm. And we we're... don't know where it's going. We're starting to get uh, slim pickings on the BL. Okay, but why can't you drink Dos Equis? I mean, you can drink Dos Equis if you want. That's what I would be drinking. I wouldn't be drinking Bud Light or Stella Artois. Yuck. But for those of you who don't know, as soon as we go into a state of emergency and, you know, like martial law. law goes in. You're not buying anything. You cannot buy alcohol, beer. You can't buy any of that. So... It comes down to it where it's one of those storms where it's massive 
Next you know you got military police driving around. Guess what? If you don't if you run out of beer, you are SOL because you ain't getting none. They won't sell it to you. So a word from the wise, go ahead and stock up on your beer, alcohol, cigarettes. You ever had a soul cerveza? Soul My grandfather soul. said that was awful, but I, I kind of liked it. Del Secchi's is good. Though. Chachi would like a soul. The amber, you would like the amber. No, I love the amber. Every time I go to, every time I go to uh, I Jalisco, I get the Del Secchi's amber. Drink responsibly, people. But yeah, the beer aisle is definitely dwindling. Drink responsibly. What? What happened to the coolers, Chris? Yeah, it's like they're starting to deplete. What do you mean? Why do people need coolers? I had to store ice. Ice for. Ice is the main key. No power, no refrigerator, so people use... What them. if you have a generator? Generator, yeah, you can run your fridge, maybe a couple house fans. But people, people are buying... You were just looking at a cooler at, at Home Depot. What's wrong with this one right here? Igloo, 28 bucks. 28 bucks, or you get the, the Yeti, the Yeti-like. The Yeti-like, that 150 was... 150 bucks. Yeah, man. You're out look, of your look, mind. Though, look, look at the coolers, look at them. Look. You're out of your mind. They're, they're, already, they're already falling. I mean, this is five days. So imagine day of oh yeah you could already see people spending 150 bucks on a cooler because they want to protect their their steaks that they bought when they should have bought yeah so if you got a fridge full of so they, they should have bought they should have bought water and gas instead of their filet mignons now they're trying to protect their crab legs in a cooler yep. instead of buying cores so what they do is they convert the ice into their fridge keeps everything cool no power no fridge unless you got a generator then you can run a fridge like i said a couple of light bulbs that was, fans. that was 50 bucks. That's not bad. That's that's a nice cooler, bro. Can we fit down a jet ski? On one of them couch jet skis, yes. <laughs> you ain't fitting it on ours. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. This guy's really wanting a cooler. That is a big ass cooler. That's a nice cooler, bro. What's this one say? How much? What's this one say for ice? That'll keep your that'll keep your beer and your crab legs good for a long. The better pre chill interior. So that means you can't just have it sitting out in the sun and throw ice in there, expect it to last for. Is that a Yeti like? What's wrong with Ozark Trail? They're all Yeti likes. <laughs> More than likely, these companies got their bought a Yeti, redesigned theirs like Yeti. Ah. They're gone. There was two. There was two gas cans right here. When we walked by about ten minutes ago, there was two gas cans here. Chris? Yeah, they're gone. No more. <laughs> no mas. They're gone. Here you go. Watch this. So the the Chevron here at ninety five in Sebastian, right here on ninety five and five twelve, getting reported as soon as I close this camera. 389 for Supreme, look at this. Price gouging. 379 for 89. And guess what? State of emergency, there's a hotline. You're not allowed to do this. So guess what? Before I report this on the hotline, I'm going in to tell them behind the counter that they're gonna be shut down here in approximately four hours when I report them for price gouging. How dare you? How dare you? Who do you think you are? Okay, so just wanted to let everybody know that the I just called it in at the Chevron over here Chevron at 95 and 512 uh, I walked in there and asked the lady I said are the prices really and as soon as I said that she started cussing me out and she says the effing prices are always what they've been you don't like it go across the street I said that's funny it's 235 across the street she said they have no gas so you want gas or not then you're gonna pay our prices I, oh okay I, I, I kind of laughed at her with her tattoos and her earring hoops and the way she cussed me out and I said have a good day and I it's 1-800-9 no scam I think it is and I, ha I called it in and uh, so we have no gas here that's that's we know here here you go here this proof right here because when they get shut down I want to be out here videotaping them I want you to look at this okay you see that that's not four dollars a gallon okay so they can kiss my butt. Look, we're even gonna pull in and turn around because we just realized they don't have gas. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. People watching is just so exciting. And my window squeaks. Do they have gas? 
Nope, they're out of gas. Look, here you go. Honey, honey, do they have gas? No, they don't have, look. Oh, man. They're out of gas. Oh, man. Time to go somewhere else. Oh, no, we're going to drive around again make sure. We're going to make sure they're all turned off. Yep. They're out of gas. Here comes another one. Here we go. Ah, good morning, everybody. Got to sleep in this morning. No need to panic. Figure I'd go out and get me some iced coffee from Cumberland and uh, check out the mass hysteria for the day. First thing in the morning. I'm sure everybody's already cleaned it out. Hopefully they still have coffee because nobody goes for coffee when there's a hurricane, right? Or hash browns. But having a good day so far. Daily blog here of how I'm doing. Got a nice night's sleep. Um, everything's ready. So, let's see if they got it Cumberland here. Oh, look, it looks like we have a line here. Must have had a tanker. The Bud Light truck's there. That's good. Go to Cumberland for all your Bud Light needs. I gotta go all the way around to get my coffee. We got people directing. Oh, they're directing traffic now. Wow. So, the poor workers at the gas station are out there in vests doing traffic control because they had a fight yesterday. So told Doreen, sorry you're out here. She says, yep, it's what we gotta do now because people are out here fist fighting. So they got half of the employees outside, half the employees inside, and the people that are inside are totally swamped because you got people outside trying to control a bunch of crazies who can't get their head out of their ass. A big shout out to one of my VIP subscribers, Eric Seaman. This guy sent me some stuff about two years ago, or then this year, and the stuff's really coming in handy, but I wanna show you a couple things that really eliminates the need for going to wait in line to find batteries. Now, I want you to check this out. Desk is a mess, excuse me. So here's the first thing I do for a flashlight, okay? So check this out. These is one thing he sent me. These are little USB LED flashlights. You can get these on Amazon for about $3 a piece. Okay, and the way they work is as long as you got a USB port, you got power, you know, USB to power it, you got a light. For instance, a little battery bank people use to charge their phones, throw your phone out the window after this hurricane, it's gonna do you nothing. But you could use this instead to have a flashlight. Look at that. And yes, it's pretty bright. This battery's dead, so I'll plug it on a bigger battery bank. You see, I bought a bunch of these and I turned around and resold them to some of the people on Facebook and a lot of them sold and some of them were like why would i need that you know i was asking like five or ten bucks for them check it out look two usb ports i could put one for my phone charger or e-cigarette charger and the other one for a flashlight Ta-da! this thing right here will run for days on this battery bank which is i think uh this is a eight uh, six thousand milliamp hour and this thing draws nothing so i have a couple of these Pretty neat, okay, little flashlights. So as long as, and you may say, well, that's great. How do you charge your battery bank? Well, we'll get to that in a second when I bust out my ham radio kit. So then we have little battery banks like this, big ones, I got even bigger ones. And then this year he sent me this. He's like, hey, Eric, I thought you might like this. Another little utility power bank with a flashlight and fan. So I got the power bank and then a little flashlight that would plug in and then a fan. Charge it over and over and over again. Let me tell you what, after a hurricane, if you don't know, if you just moved to Florida, heads up, it gets wicked hot after a hurricane, okay? Chances are you don't have air conditioning, so it's gonna be very hot. Okay, and then we got, let's see. So, he had sent me some rechargeables. I got some on charge right now. These are already charged. I lost a couple of the blue ones, but he sent me these cases. You know, it had four blue ones, double A's. Um, it had a case here for four, triple A, but, now check this out. You went to Home Depot with me in video and you saw that all the double A's were gone, right? Watch this. Now this will be very, very cool. So let's say you need double A's and all you have is triple A's. Very good. So you could take in my little bag over here. I got them all in here. I could take a triple A battery, put it in these little plastic cases. Check this out. Now it's a double A, okay? 
and then you can put that in your AA whatever. So I've got a handful of these, but wait, there's more. Let's say you wanna make it a C battery and this is a AA, well, ta-da, now look, huh, I got a C battery, okay? And now they're still 1.5 volt, but a little less capacity. So it'll work, just not as much capacity. Let's say you wanna make this a D battery. Oh, oh, ta-da, already got one in there. Got a rechargeable right here. You put that in, now you got a D battery. So one, two, okay? And you may say, well, wow, why, why would I wanna go, now I'm investing more money in rechargeable batteries to, to play this game? Well, how about this? You don't, when they're dead, you just charge them up. So they're rechargeable. You could, you could charge them up again. Next question you're gonna say, that's good. You don't have power with a Hurricane Eric. How do you charge it? Oh my gosh, I love it, I love it. I got an answer for everything. Oh yeah. He sent me this as well. A four battery charger that you could leave in the sun with a solar panel. Look at that, the power of the sun. Charge batteries, or you could plug it in with the USB to five volt or whatever it is in there and charge your batteries. Hey Eric, the sun's not out because I don't have, okay. <laughs> there, sun's not out. This is called a Dynamo USB. Simply plug your device in here and crank away. <laughs> yeah, it may be a little tedious here cranking this thing to have light, but I guess what? I will never be without light. I will never be without power. I have more batteries than this. Um, but I'm just, you know, some of these battery banks are on charge. Uh, some of the batteries themselves are on chargers right now. So they're all getting ready because I like to top them up. I don't know when the last time I charged them. So one more thing here. Oh, got another battery bank here. So this one will run a light as well. All these charged with five volt USB. So that's dead right here, but I still have plenty of, plenty of light to see. You gotta go take a leak. It's dark, who burns a candle anymore, right? One more thing, let's say you need USB power for your e-cigarette, right? Because us smokers here, or vapors, you know, you gotta have a way to charge. You know, uh, you know notice I'm not saying phone chargers, because again, you're not going to have phone service in this hurricane catastrophe, so throw the phone away when you're done. Uh, you wanna have USB power for your e-cigarette or lights or whatever, so I could take, like this, I could actually take two of these rechargeable, Double A batteries, so we'll take these two. Sorry, busy, phone's ringing. Okay, take two of these, go like this. One. There we go, two. There you go, I got a flashlight. You see, there's no need to go to the store if you prepare for this stuff like this. Yeah, you don't have to be scientific and all fancy dancy like me, but there are ways and there are links in the description of this video to show you things like this, like rechargeable batteries and solar chargers and more to keep you with power or lights or USB power. And you know, there's way, I can go way more with my little ham kit I'll show you, but doesn't this, isn't this pretty cool? You know, who uses C batteries anymore unless you're like from 1986, but there you go, you got C batteries. And you can drop these in a charger that does C battery rechargeables. You can drop it and pull these out, put these in AA chargers. You know, the possibilities are endless. The only thing I don't have here is a nine volt, but I don't think I really use anything for nine volt. So there's your little summary of what I have here for portable power options. And uh, I'm gonna get the rest of this stuff charged up and topped off and ready to go. So generators are already ready. Uh, for those asking about generators, so this is what I have is a Coleman 6250 max or maximum peak watts. I think it's 5250 or, or 6000 or something like that is the average. Has a four 110s on it, a couple circuit breakers, a 220. I don't wire it into my house because I'm not experienced as an electrician. Therefore, I use a lot of extension cords and run them independently to things, heavy duty extension cords, but it's full of gas holds like five gallons and uh, I started it up just you know to make sure I mean I started it June 1st beginning of hurricane season I started it about mm, a month ago make sure I did not store it you never want to store these things with gas 
uh, for months and months and months the gas goes bad. So you want to make sure you put store, uh, stabilizer in the gas but keep this empty. Make sure you shut the gas valve off right there. Run it till it runs out of gas. That way the carburetor's clean and the jets are clean and it's ready to go. So I got my generator sitting here. Had to clean up my side porch here. I got to rope some stuff up like tables and stuff. So I got my gas here. So like 25 gallons total between what's in the generator and, and this. Uh, vehicles are full. Everything's full. One thing I am looking forward to and one thing I'm not looking forward to is taking down these antennas. So this antenna really needs an adjustment. For those who are watching that don't know, this is my ham radio antenna, one of them. I got one over there. I got a couple on the other side. I got a bunch of them right here. Uh, this needs an adjustment up top, and I dread taking that down. But now I have a reason, so I'm going to take it down for the hurricane. And then I'll adjust it when the hurricane's over and put it back up. It takes two people. Um, this one, we're going to give her a torture test. The Super Penetrator SPT 500, for those that watch, we're going to leave it up. We're going to see what she handles. Will she handle a buck fifty? We don't know. The shed might not be there when it's all said and done. I got it strapped down with steel cable. The weather station right here is going to stay. Let me get a better angle. For those who are familiar, my Davis Vantage Pro 2. We're going to leave that up. We're going to get some max wind readings. Um, and uh, I'm not going to set it up on battery and all that because I want to reserve battery power for more important things. Um, is this thing still spinning? Oh, yeah. Ready to go. Um, well, it's a little sticky. Maybe there's some cobwebs up in there. Oh, yeah. She's starting to get a little. I've only been up there a couple of years. Um, anyways, we're going to leave that up and, and try to get the max wind speed here in the backyard. My TV antenna, I'm going to leave this up until the very last minute and I'm going to pull it down, but I'm not going to pull it all the way down because I want to have TV the second the winds lighten up. I'll fire up my TV and everything. Uh, see, with this, this is free, guys. There's a TV video I have on my channel. Check it out. How to get over the air HD TV for free um, with this setup right here. This is exactly what I used in my video. Free, so you don't have to, when the storm's over, you don't have to worry about the power lines if you have a generator, or the cable lines, or the AT&T lines, or your satellite dish. Um, this satellite dish I have back here is old. I bypassed that. Merry Christmas, it's August. Um, so, yeah, the uh, satellite dish is non-functioning. This is what I use for TV, and that's what I'll have the second I fire the generator up. Okay, so the 5 p.m. advisory is in. Just about a half hour after the last clip I just made, and all of a sudden, a breaking announcement from the hurricane experts at the Hurricane Center. This thing could possibly turn and go due north before it hits Florida. Now, was that ever an opportunity in the last two or three days we've been watching this? No. Now, all of a sudden, hmm, he says, this thing might turn... And where do you think it's going to go if it turns and hits north? That's right, South Carolina, North Carolina. But they're not watching it that way. They're thinking it's going to Florida. Let's see what they say right here. And they're talking about a computer model. Okay, now let's see if we can hear this. Kane Center, they take baby steps when it comes to changes in the forecast. But again, let me show you the latest Euro model. And this is a big change. Here it is as it continues tracking toward the west. It moves toward Florida stops before making landfall and then goes due north. It's a dramatic change. The Euro, a very reliable model, something the Hurricane Center looks at very closely. However, I need to caution you, it's one run. Some of the other models agree, but it's one run. Until we start to see this on a more consistent basis, we can't quite take it to the bank. So again, the headline here at five o'clock, major hurricane, forecast to intensify, moving toward the Bahamas, where, by the way, hurricane warnings were just issued, moving in the general direction of Florida. And now some of the computer modeling suggests the storm will turn north before it hits Florida. Turn north before it hits Florida. Wow. I guarantee tomorrow I wake up and the forecast cone is probably halfway off the coast of Florida. We don't know where this is going. So good example to show you this thing has done nothing that they said. If you could predict this, it would be more likely to know who needs to prepare but the observation is this everybody needs to have a preparation plan in place and have their stuff days and days and days or even the beginning of hurricane season june 1st have them ready so that if this thing were to turn and not hit, hit here at all guess what you panic for nothing why did i say you panic for nothing oh it could have been a disaster you're right but if you would have had all your stuff already, you could have just sat home, 
had a cigar, and watched football instead of having to go wait out in line and cuss innocent 24-year-old women out at the gas pump because you decided not to have your gas. So we have an observation here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not out of gas. I want to show you something. We have gas over two days away from the storm and there is plenty of gas. Why? Well, here's why. Because now that the storm is predicted to go to North Carolina, everybody dropped their panic shield. Everybody is going to be mad now that they panicked for nothing. Oh, why go to the gas station, honey? We don't need gas, storm ain't coming here. Well, my observation of that is, if you would have had gas months ago in your cans, you would have never had to go out here and late in line in the first place. But because you did, now you're upset that you just spent $600 on gas and a generator and supplies, and the hurricane didn't even come here. You should have got that months ago when you had nothing better to do, put it in your shed, add some stabilizer, get your canned goods that never go bad, non-perishables, get your generator, leave it with gas, no gas in it, uh, gasless, and uh, just wait for the storm before you blow the panic whistle. Let me show you another observation here. You're gonna love this one. Where do you find everybody in Sebastian, Florida that prepared? <laughs> At Vic's Pizza and Pasta here. Because not only is this place an awesome place to eat, but everybody already had their supplies. So the place is booked. Everybody's having a nice, delicious Italian dinner without panic because they already had their stuff. That's why the place is booked. Vic's Pizza. What we got, Chris? We got an Osak. One well, shot, one kill. One shot, one kill by Edgar Hoyle. I, I, let me zoom in on that. Oh, yeah. That's a nice cigar. Well, it seems, it, it, it would seem that we are hanging out on your back porch with a nice breeze tonight. Not a care in the world. Why? Well, it seems that the storm has taken a sudden right hook. Okay, let's let's supposedly let's talk let's talk days. about let's talk about this. So this is a couple. Okay, this is a big. Okay, so I got an email, Rodney T. You know who you are. You're watching right now. I know it, Rodney T. Subscriber, one of the VIPs. <coughs> he says, "Hey Eric, it doesn't look like the hurricane's coming your way," and then he says. Check out Lowe's and Home Depot's return policy on generators. Now, Chris, I haven't told you about this, so you're looking at me like, what? Why would he ask me to check out their return policy? He gave me an example of South Carolina. What do you think people around here are doing with their generators now that the storm is heading to the north? Probably trying to bring all their stuff back. Oh, wait, wait a second. They're trying to bring all their stuff back. Why? Because they feel that it is a waste of money to sit in their shed. Because it sits there for eight months out of the year, possibly never used. Which is a bad idea. Well, okay, but 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 here's the deal. They figure, well, you know, I could, I could turn around and, and return this. Because what he said in the email was this. People tried returning their, their, uh, their generators... And, and Lowe's was like, bro, you ran this thing. We're not going to take it back. So they have a return policy, apparently, of if it's been unboxed, it's not getting returned. Why do you think that, Chris? Because more than likely, if it's out of the box, they've already put oil in it. They put a little gas in it. Yeah, and, they, and when did they use it? Probably Wednesday, Thursday. And when did they decide to return it? And then they woke up Saturday morning and said yeah, we might just want to go ahead and bring this back. Why? Because the storm's going, <laughs> the storm's going out to sea. So I didn't even tell Chris about this email. He's blind about this. The thing is, listen, you you may think that that generator is a waste of your money because, oh, man, I scrambled to get it, and I had to have that generator. But now the hurricane is turning north. So the hurricane's turning turning north, and you think, oh, man, that was a waste of money. No, it's not. Why? Why was it a good idea to buy that generator in the first place, Chris? To prepare. 
Prepare is the key word here in this video. But, but they have to realize that peak season ends October 31st. The so peak of season. The actual season ends in November, but the peak, so August to October is peak. So you're telling me we could have a, a hurricane here in September? We could have a hurricane four days before Halloween? Look at 2004. When did both them hurricanes hit? I'm, don't hold me to it, but I'm pretty sure they were in September. Wow. What this this so is we're, we're like in the start of the peak of the season. For you people who what just you gotta got? go ahead and return your generator, here's your chart. The peak of season hasn't even come yet. That says September first is the peak of season. Oh well, September tenth. That's the ten? You're right, that's the ten. Yeah, so September tenth is the peak of we're not even at peak hurricane season. There's still waves coming off Africa. All it takes is one. So, and that can run all the way till, like I said, normally about the end of October. Halloween cut off starts June first, but like I said, it really doesn't heat up till August, July sometimes. When does hurricane season start? June first. When should you prepare? June first. When should you have everything in place? June first. Exactly, June first. So right now the Noah planes, so Noah. Noah 2 is in the, the middle of the storm now. He's in there right now. Oh, they're just now flying out of the eye. As you can see, the color charts. So you got your deep purples, 64 knots. So how often does this thing report when they fly into the eye? So normally the, the low level reconnaissance goes out before, like two hours before the the track advisories. The low level reconnaissance go out before then. That way the new advisories. So you can see like the, the purples which are hurricane forest and the lights and the pinks and the dark pinks. What does this tell me? Sum it up. Alright so the dark pinks they measure 967 millibars but if you look the dark pinks are 137 knots plus which is 137 knots if you convert that to miles per hour it's 157 miles an hour. So right now, their last drop through the eye wall was 939 millibars, which the last advisor, I think, was like 945. So it's strengthening. So it's possibly at the 11 o'clock, it could be a Cat 5. And if it's a Cat 5, though, we don't know where it's going. See, then you see the pattern. So they measure so they measure how fast cool. the storm's moving. And where the, where the lowest pressure is. And, and, and where it's moving. So right now, they got two planes that go through. So there's one, so that that dot, so they'll they'll line the dots up, and that's where they get their their movement. So that one drop was 941 millibars. That's on the second plane, and you can see the second plane. So now what this plane will do is it'll go straight this way. Oh, the green line is where the plane flew. Yeah. Okay. And, and these are drop zones, so they drop like they drop a t they check yeah. the pressure and all that stuff. So it'll okay. Go this way. And then normally it'll cut back through and go this way and then straight down and then up and then straight across. It does like 30 measurements and then it's done. Same way with the other plane. So there's two planes flying through the storm at the same time. And now what do we know about the storm right now? They, 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 they forecasted this thing to go north, turn north, and we're not going to get much. What do you well, think? I mean, that's a large bubble. We don't know. I mean, that's a large bubble. I mean, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Tell, tell, tell me here, is that cone where the impacts will be felt? I know the answer. Do you know the answer? That cone shows that it's way over there in the Roanoke, Virginia or whatever. Is that, what does that cone mean? Tell these people. What does that cone mean? You're a big expert in the NOAA so, reconnaissance. So this is basically your, your five-day era cone. What's that cone called? The cone of uncertainty. Cone of uncertainty, yeah. Why? Because they don't, they don't have a clue exactly where it's going. Exactly beyond Tuesday. Exactly. So anywhere even Tuesday, you're talking a hundred and fifty mile error cone, a hundred and fifty mile. It takes a south shift. Guess what? We're getting an eye wall right into. So you right tell me, Sebastian. you tell me, we can get an eye wall in Sebastian, it's Florida. It's still possible. It is still possible. We're not, we're not in the uncertainty cone. We're in the the certain cone. The imminent cone. So if it wasn't clear, I'll give you another example of facts here of why you should be prepared and 
understand and have your game plan ready. What we're looking at right now, we have Dorian just like a day in, a day away in the Bahamas as a record-shattering Category 5 hurricane with gusts over 200 in the Bahamas, okay? Other areas to watch, though. You see, we have it, it, the average person would look at this and say, well, this little yellow X here says a low chance of forming, and it, that's not going towards me. And, and this one over here, you know, right here, it's going towards Mexico. Ah, I'm not concerned with that. Then they say, oh, look, the red X, that's a high chance of probability to become a storm. But look, it's going this way. So I'm not concerned if I live over here in Georgia or Texas, really. But let me show you why that makes no sense to think that way. Because Dorian was never supposed to be here as a record-shattering, strongest hurricane to hit the Bahamas in recorded history, okay? They originally predicted it here as when it was a tropical storm over here. They originally predicted it to come up through here by the Hispaniola, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Only be a Category 1, but then fizzle out to a low-pressure system right where that thing is now. Okay, That was supposed to be a 35-mile-an-hour storm on Saturday at 2 a.m. Saturday at 2 a.m., that was a 155-mile-an-hour major hurricane. So... What does this say? Because I was recording all these clips just to have proof to see that we don't know what's going to happen and you don't know where it's going. So if this thing totally missed these islands, came up around San Juan, straight over this way as a major catastrophic event, how could you say that the other little red X off Africa isn't going to turn into a Cat 5 and make a beeline due west towards Florida or Carolinas? You don't know. So don't look at your little three-day projected path because it changes all the time. This is going to go down as the hurricane that did nothing that they predicted. Every time they predicted something, well, it's going to go right here through the Mana Trench or whatever that's called, the, the Marna Pass between San Juan and Hispaniola, never even went there. They said for two days this thing was going to go through there, and it was a choice. Does it hit Puerto Rico or does it hit the high mountains of Hispaniola and weaken? Didn't go anywhere here, went over this way. And then they said, well, it's not going to strengthen too bad. It's going to be about a Category 1, possibly a 2. And by the time it was up here, it was a 4. Okay? So you don't know where this is going. You have to prepare. You have to stay alert and have your game plan ready in the case of an emergency. Part of your preparations, if you're not a ham radio operator, is ham radio listen. These guys on ham radio have more information than you'll ever get from your news service or your national weather service. I mean, these are eyes on the ground. These are people. Uh, ham radio during a hurricane is definitely why we participate and practice ham radio is for events like this. There you go. So he's at Cleveland Clinic. Very good, Jerry. And that's kind of how I want this uh, as far as generator level. If you're not on generator, you can just say full, excuse me, full or 100%. But once you go on generator... So these are the guys at the Ham Radio Local Club in Indian River County. They're manning all the shelters as volunteers, Red Cross and assisting. Uh, all these guys are giving their reports on the hour to let know uh, how many people are at the shelters, how many people have fuel, where they need supplies. This is your ticket. If you didn't learn anything in this hurricane video so far and you don't want to repair or prepare, the only thing you need to know is ham radio saves lives. Ham radio is where it's at. Ham radio is the do all end all last resort, last contact when all else fails. Your information is right here on ham radio. Now this is just my little handheld because I'm out here having a cigar watching uh wait for the storm to come just passing time. But all my stuff set up at the house. I got all the com uh, emergency communications, a battery and solar antennas, everything portable ready to deploy if needed. But um, just listening to what the traffic is like. All the repeaters are active. Let's try another one. Let's see. When you the let's mic. try. So let's move down to the... Okay, this one's on uh, pause remote. Nobody's there. But the Sarnet statewide... Busy. Sarnet is your key in Florida. You can check out my Sarnet video. This network on Sarnet is statewide from the Keys 
tip of Florida to tip of Florida. And Sarnet uh, is by far connecting everybody and every emergency operations center in the state with emergency communications and information. So ham radio is where it's at, people. And there's a lot of frequencies around that are in use for this. Um, but, you know, I'm just sitting out here taking a break. Oh, Chris is out there staring at the clouds, waiting for a feeder band. <laughs> and uh, just, you know, no panic. No panic needed. If anything happens, I have my ham radio. And if you're not a follower of my channel, go ahead and subscribe because you will see the power of my ham radio and our ham radio and what we do and why it's such a viable piece of information, why it's a very important means of communication. When all else fails, Ham radio is there. Just a few of many of the handhelds that I have charged. I mean, I have my other radios here. I got stuff around. It's a mess. But um, handheld radios are always good because they're portable. They're battery powered. Between these four radios here, I'd have a, a, probably a week or more of uh, power. But with the generator, I could charge them back up. But then we talk about power here. My lithium iron phosphate bio -NO that I use to power the big radio in my kit. Let me show you that. And there's a complete video on this with my waterproof backpack that's submersible to show you. But look, I have, you know, interfaces. I have uh, antennas galore in here. I have more antennas. I have wire antennas. I have end-fed antennas. I have two-meter J-pole antennas roll up. I have my ICOM 706 in here, my HF transceiver. I got a solar panel in here, fold-up solar panel, where I could charge. Let me try to find it here. I've been rummaging through here trying to find stuff to uh, make sure I get everything. So I got my solar panel here. This is a cheap one I got on eBay or Amazon, wherever. But look, folds out, right? So then with this, I also have a USB out. I could charge a phone or e-cigarette or whatever. I could also output this to a solar charge controller, which should be in this bag right here. Again, I'm not taking all this stuff out because you know, it's ready for next time. But I got my solar charge controller here that hooks up to the solar panel, and that way I could charge my uh, lithium iron battery, which will, this, this battery right here will run this radio and other peripherals for a long time. This is a, a 12 amp hour, they have 20 amp, 30 amp hour, and uh, something like this, man, I can run my laptop charger, I can run these. My laptop is also in my go kit, so I can send emails over VHF or HF frequencies. I can send emails with an antenna thrown out in the yard real quick. My laptop, my ham radio, the interface, connecting it without all this stuff over here on my desk. I mean, I'm in communication. I am ready. Ham radio. For those who are not a ham radio operator watching this video, if you're interested in, in getting things like this together in a kit, you know, I mean, this is all unorganized, but I mean, I have, I could do this inside. I could do this on the beach portable. I could throw wires up in a tree like this, you know, with all my little portable batteries I showed you earlier. I have everything ready to go. So I don't have to take my big radios off my desk. I can use everything that's in this kit when it's organized nicely. Throw it in my waterproof backpack over there. It's also got water bottles and everything else in it. And be in communication wherever I go. This is a big deal. Ham radio is fun. It's a hobby. But when it comes go time, ham radio is what we use to stay in communication. I even got my portable chameleon here, backpackable antenna. I can take that with me, set it up in a matter of seconds in the driveway. Uh, have a loop antenna for HF. And if you say, well, Eric, can you show us, really, get on the radio and show us some evidence on why ham radio does what it does with a hurricane? Well, no, because I'm not in danger. There's no need for me to get on there and tie up frequencies because there's nothing wrong. I'm reserving that for someone who may be in danger. I could listen all day, but there's no sense in me getting on there and say, oh, yeah, this is Eric. Oh, I'm in Sebastian just letting you know uh, the wind is, we don't need to know what the wind reports are. That's why there's weather stations. Keep the frequencies open for immediate danger of life and property, and when it's all over, then you can talk about it. If you're in an area that says to evacuate because you're in a low-lying area or you're on the coast, get out. There's nothing you can do that's going to save you if the water comes in. The most powerful force of nature is water. And the storm surge, depending on where you live, could be 20, 30 feet. That'll take your entire house away. So rule number one, if they say evacuate, you evacuate. Take your stuff, take your belongings. Do not tie your pets up in the house thinking they're going to be okay. 
I've heard of people tethering their, their animals inside the house so they don't blow away. What they're really doing is they're, they're drowning their animals when the storm surge comes up 30 feet. Think about it, use your head, be smart, don't be an idiot. Get out. If you're in a storm surge area or on the coast, this is nothing. This is a tropical storm force storm surge right here. You can imagine what it's like on the beach or worse, in the Bahamas. Our friends in the Bahamas weren't so lucky. There's nothing you can do when the storm surge is bad. Okay, so I'll make this quick because it's getting pretty bad out here, but this is only tropical storm force. Enough of the games, I'm gonna be serious for a second. If you can't handle preparing for something like this that you see behind me, get out. If you live in Florida and you can't handle this, go back to New York, go back to Dakota, go back somewhere, wherever you came from. Don't make it unsafe out there for me because you wanna go out there and panic and cause chaos with your neighbors who have to go rescue you because you weren't smart enough to think about something that could be this devastating. The Bahamas, unfortunately, all our friends in the Bahamas, my heart and prayers goes out to every single one of those. What a catastrophe, and they'll never be the same. You can't prepare for something like that in the Bahamas. It's pray to God and think about your family. Okay, take a little bit of this information and proof here, what you're seeing, and I had to bring it to you a different way to get the point across. Much like the people that are stopping over here asking me, are you part of the news media? Yeah, because the news media comes around with a 15-year-old Cadillac and a handheld Sony camera. No, they don't even know if they're alive, I don't think. They have no idea what's going on. They think it's fascinating to look at the waves. Nobody's thought about preparing, and they go out the last minute and panic. So I hope this video, if you want to unsubscribe and never talk to me again, fine. But I hope somebody takes this serious and thinks about preparing while they live in a state like this that could deal with a hurricane. Stay safe. Think of your family and pets and be prepared. That's what the name of the game in this is. Be prepared. If you can't prepare, get out. End of story. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.